In this very first video lecture, I'd like to give a quick refresher of some of the pros and cons of an online course and introduce you to the various online resources available to you in this course. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to this online version of CS12. In this course, I'm using exactly the same lecture materials and examples as I do in the classroom version, except that now they are adapted to an online setting. We'll talk in a few moments about what those materials consist of, but for now, just know that I'll be publishing each week's new materials to Canvas at the beginning of each week, either late Sunday night or early Monday morning. Everything that you'll need in this course will be published to Canvas, so get started right away on learning your way around. There should be another short video lecture giving you a brief overview to the organization of this course on Canvas. Also, you should also see the Getting Started checklist for this online course, which should be the first announcement posted on Canvas. Online classes, both here and elsewhere, are becoming a very popular way of taking courses. And it's no wonder because online courses have many advantages. For starters, online classes allow you to learn material on your own schedule and at your own pace. If you don't quite grasp something the first time, you could always figuratively hit the rewind button and go over it again as many times as needed. In an online course, there's no longer any need to travel to campus and fight for parking so that you can attend lectures. This kind of flexibility can be invaluable if you are also trying to balance work, family, or any other personal considerations. Online learning is a great alternative for the focused, motivated, and self-disciplined learner. But online learning is not necessarily for everyone, and it does pose some distinct challenges. For example, in an online course, there is much less direct interaction with the instructor or other students. In a classroom setting, I can look at the faces and read the body language of my students to tell whether or not they are getting it, or if I need to slow down, or speed up, or go over something again. Obviously, that won't work anymore online. Now, there is much more initiative required on your part to speak up and ask for help when you aren't understanding something. Otherwise, it can be easy to feel isolated and to quickly fall behind in an online course. For these kind of reasons, an online course might not be the best choice for someone who requires lots of direction or prompting, or lots of face-to-face -face time, or for those perhaps with a little less learning motivation. All of this isn't just anecdotal. Our distance learning organization has shown that, statistically, there are somewhat lower success rates in online courses versus the traditional classroom courses. Online learning can be a great alternative, but it's definitely not a magic bullet. I want this class to buck that success rate trend. So, what can we do to help you be successful in this course? Here are two keys to a successful experience in this online class, and I really can't emphasize these things strongly enough. Number one, even if you're taking an online class, you still have to go to class, so to speak. Although you're taking this class remotely, on your own schedule and at your own pace, you still do need to go through all the weekly course materials, just as if you were attending in a physical classroom. The lecture notes and videos, the source code examples and their code walkthrough videos. Make sure you do all of this before you start in on the weekly assignments. In other words, make sure you understand what you're going to be doing before trying to do it. And number two, do not, I repeat, do not, make the fatal mistake of just approaching this online course in terms of, I'm just going to turn in the assignments each week and I'm good. Nope, doesn't work that way. Based on what I've observed over the semesters, you're just going to make it harder on yourself if you try to do things like that. Things will come back to bite you later on at exam time, and also later on in the course, when you realize that you didn't take the time to thoroughly understand some of the earlier fundamentals. Each of the assignments is drawn from and practices what was found in the accompanying lecture materials. The first half assignments are a chance to practice various programming fundamentals in isolation. And then the second half assignments will start tying things together on increasingly longer and somewhat more complex programs. So take the time to thoroughly understand what's behind each of the assignments and follow them fully and closely. That's it. The secret to your success in this online course is largely as simple as following these two key takeaway lessons. And don't think that this is just me talking. Have a look elsewhere at the past semester lessons learned that last semester's students have shared with you. They're trying to tell you pretty much the same things, except learn the hard way. 
I'll try and do my part by providing various types of online materials. For each lecture topic we cover, the following types of materials will be available. My primary means of covering the material will be through a series of lecture videos and the accompanying lecture notes. My online lectures will be a series of YouTube videos on each topic, most of them in the 5 to 10 minute range and fully closed captioned, in which I'll go over the associated lecture notes along with my own narration and explanations. My narrations will explain the topics above and beyond what's shown in the lecture notes, so it benefits you to listen to them all. If you're watching this video, then you've already found the first one. To go along with these videos, I've also made the background lecture material available as a hard copy printed lecture notes course pack. By now you should already have obtained these as the required course text. The instructions for obtaining these were sent in the welcome letter email you received in the weeks prior to this course, and they are also given in the syllabus. If you don't have these notes by now, you should purchase them ASAP. The idea is that as you view and listen to the lecture videos, you should also jot down your own notes on what you see and hear, rather than waste lots of time on more detailed note-taking. Trust me, come exam time, you will thank yourself for having done that as you go along. In my course, I also provide lots and lots of source code examples, which are incorporated or referenced in the lecture notes. You should definitely make a point of downloading all these Java files and executing them so you can study how they work. They will be made available as weekly zip files. I encourage you to muck around and play with these files. You can always re-download them later. I want to strongly emphasize from the outset that programming is not something that you can learn by watching or Googling. You have to look at examples and understand how they work so that you can begin to write your own code. Along with the source code files, I will also provide source code walkthroughs. These will simply be additional YouTube videos which talk through and demonstrate how the code works. Hopefully this will be kind of like me sitting at your side and explaining how the code works step by step. My intent in providing these various types of materials to you is to give you alternate ways of learning the material in a way that best suits your own skill level and learning style. The intended audience for this class is those who are programming for the very first time. However, every semester we do have students in here who have programmed before in one or more languages. I want to give all of you, at whatever level you are, a sort of all-you-can-eat Java buffet. Use as much or as little of the material as you need to to master each of the topics. Everyone has their own preferred mix of learning styles, whether it be reading or listening or doing. In fact, we'll have an exercise this week in which you'll explore your own personal learning style. I just want to make sure there is something in this class for everyone. No matter what your style is, I want to emphasize again that programming is not a spectator sport. The best way to learn to program is by practicing it and rest assured that you'll have lots of opportunity to do that in this course. But feel free to experiment with Java on the side on your own because that's how you really master a programming language. So here are my suggestions for your utilization of the various online materials, depending upon your starting level of experience. You can also find this table online in Canvas in the Course Documents and Resources module. If you're a new programmer, if this is your first real programming language, and I suspect that will describe many of you, then I suggest you make full use of all available resources. Page through the course pack lecture notes and go through them along with the lecture videos which explain them in much more detail. Take notes as needed as you go through them. Download the source code examples and try executing them as you view their associated source code walkthrough videos. If you do have some programming experience, or if you have programmed in multiple languages before, then I suggest using these resources as indicated here. Definitely go through the lecture notes, but feel free to view their accompanying videos as you need to. You should definitely also download and execute and study the various source code examples and refer to the code walkthrough videos as needed. All these lecture materials are here for your benefit. You will find the core concepts needed to complete the program assignments and examples of every aspect of any code you'll need to write all well explained in them. 
Don't shortcut your learning by simply jumping straight to the programs. You'll just turn simple assignments into needlessly complicated ones by doing that. I see this happen every single semester. Hey, just a word to the wise among you. It's your time and your education. Okay, so what's next? Well, I would definitely suggest you go through all the items on the Getting Started checklist, which is posted in the first announcement on Canvas. Spend a little time this week getting familiar with what's where on Canvas, because everything you need will be there. You definitely want to become familiar with the course syllabus, and there should be a separate short lecture video on the syllabus. To further incentivize you, in one of this week's assignments, there will be a series of questions on the syllabus, whose answers will be found throughout the syllabus. Take a look at the Week 1 materials to get an idea of how each week's materials will be structured, because every future week will look something similar. Finally, if at any time you have any questions or problems whatsoever, please ask and let me know. You're the one who has to do the work of learning the material, but I will always be here to help you do that. Okay, next let's start looking a little more at the organization of the course itself.